guys and welcome back to another video this is football connect i'm your host sam and we are back again with another one and we are just moving from next step to another people too many many fixtures i cannot even put this under control jordan henderson scores today for england people jordan Anderson. i'm talking about the skipper liverpool's captain scores today for england i've never been so excited about that performance this is what we are talking about this was what we were also all we were all wondering what england has to offer and what are they going to give us in this tournament and we are at a point to say that they're definitely giving us you know they're really giving us something and i'm really excited because it looks like they keep moving forward and they keep proving a lot of people wrong and that is very important for a team moving on at this pace where everyone almost everyone are doubting them to do anything and keep producing these amazing moments give giving the pay fans something to hope for each and every day that's all what we love about football and we are seeing it first hand in this tournament i'm really excited about the game i don't know what are your thoughts a lot of people like the scottish don't want england to continue doing what they're doing but i'm really enjoying what they're doing and i'm gonna go with them you know i hope that you guys can join me but i'm gonna go with them let's give them this thing because they're really not, at this moment they're fighting and denmark as well they win the game today and they move on to the next stage amazing performance the performance was really what they needed and the that emotional story continues you know that story continues they keep writing this story and they keep moving forward and it's amazing to see what they're doing it's always amazing to see when a team is performing this good and we cannot even look out past them so i want to hear your thoughts in the comment section guys for starters the game finished england beat ukraine by four goals to nil and we saw denmark beating czech republic by two goals to one amazing amazing performance so before i go to looking at the game just giving you the match stats and after the match stats of course i'm gonna go straight to talk about the other games but i'm not gonna give you any predictions that i'm gonna leave it for you let me know in the comment section what did you think about the performance and what you want to see click the like button and subscribe to the football connect but let's start with the england game for starters ukraine didn't really i you know the Ukraine that I saw the last game, the one that they won in the last against the Sweden, they played like they had something to, you know, they were really active. They wanted to prove something. And I was really impressed by that. But today's Ukraine, something was missing. And most of the, uh, we have to accept this, this part as well. Mostly it was because of how good England were. England were so good that in a way, it made Ukraine to look like they were not even a good team <laughs> at all. It made Ukraine look like they were not even a good team. And you, England has done this now for a while now. You know? In this tournament, every single team that has performed better before England, they are just meant to look like they don't have anything to offer. The only team that I saw giving a proper hand hand with England was only, if I'm not mistaken, Scotland and Scotland for them it was a derby and the people understand that but it was the only team Czech Republic looked like they were not even that themselves Germany I didn't even see Germany and England does not stop they continue doing this thing Southgate keeps putting the right players keep putting the right players as much as the England the public media and all the fans have it feels like they have the right to decide who should be in the ground for England. I think they've come to a point of learning to trust Gareth Southgate with whoever he chooses for his squad because it seems like everyone he chooses always deliver whatever he's looking for. And that has been amazing to see. So that's my first thing that I'm putting there. So much respect to Gareth Southgate to get the fans to actually agree with this ways of doing this thing with football with these ways of able to create a master team that is refusing to allow any team to score against them at the same time they attack in a point where it's made in the defender at the same time which kindly like eliminate the other team because when we talk about the game england scored early in the first half four minutes hurricane scores uh, what an amazing assist from sterling 
That was the goal. And they sit back. But in sitting back, they made sure that they were stopping Ukraine's danger people, every single player who was trying to create something. They were failing, even though they tried many times. And in a way, I felt like the first half after England scoring, what they did was like, we are waiting for you, Ukraine. Prove to us that you can deliver something. Come and show us what's up. Come and show us that you have something to offer. And I have to say, I didn't see anything from Ukraine. And from then, went in for half time. Gaza Southgate told them that just tweak it a little bit there and then. Then you look sure comes back like a house on fire. Two two assists. Or are they two assists? Oh yeah, yeah, two assists. Then the last one was from Foden from from Mason Mount. And that was it. That was the end of the game. Four goals. Just that easy. Now let's talk about some individuals. Let's talk about the star of the match first and forward. Harry Kane. What a performance. What a performance. After every single pay person, including me, many times I talked about this in this show, Euro Talk, and you heard me saying that I'm not really impressed by Harry Kane. I'm wondering why people are still putting that respect on him, that trust on him, while he's not even performing to the level that we expected to see from him. And I've I've really been impressed by that. Hello, hello, Mr. Viscos. How are you doing? It's not coming home. I love this. I love the river. Yeah, I, give me, you know, what? one thing I want to do. I'm not an England supporter for starters. I have to, uh, no, I'm, I'm an England supporter for starters, but I'm not a citizen. I'm not like living in England for, 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 for once. So you have to understand that before we even go anywhere. I want you guys to let me, I would love you to do this in the comment section. Let me know why you think it's not coming home. Give me a reason. Give me a reason, a valid reason that can make me believe that as much as the English fans are believing, it's not coming home. Give me a reason so that I can hold on to that. That will really mean a lot. But I love this. It's not coming home. That's your thought. Let me know in the comment section. Tell me why you believe that it's not coming home. That would be amazing. Click that like button, guys, if you're just joining us and subscribe to the Football Connect. Always important. So talking about also the performance, what really I was impressed about as a Liverpool fan was to watch Jordan Henderson scoring a goal for, for once. Be, because Italy will win the Euros. You know what? I don't want, I will never disagree with you on that. I will never disagree with you because Italy are on another level. But I want to say something that where is the almighty? <laughs> Somehow, somewhere I feel like I'm talking to the almighty already here because I'm just feeling like you know, it always feels like the Almighty whenever you hear somebody asking you that question, you know. Anyway, I, I'm still waiting for the Almighty has been quiet. Since Netherlands went out of the Euro, I'm wondering what happened to my man because I kind of miss miss some of the conversation we, we, we talk about, you know. I always miss that anyway. But uh, I'll see. Maybe it's the, this is the Almighty we are talking to right now. I don't know. <laughs> it's always interesting. Click the like button, guys, and subscribe to the Football Connect. So like I'm saying, like I said, Kane, we were thinking that he was out. Coming from Norway, he comes with an amazing performance. And this is why we love. I've heard the Almighty is a legend on the Football Connect. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> he is a legend. I don't want to lie to you. I, I enjoy every single time I spend time with the Almighty. It always tricks me with some of the things. But now these days, I make sure I check. <laughs> I don't play in the games of the Almighty, but I really respect the man. He is definitely a legend. That's for sure. And anyway, like I'm saying, Kane, the performance they pulled out today was out of this world. And I really, really, really did love it. And I hope to see more from him. And I hope to see what... This is what we were looking for when we talked about Hurricane. We wanted to see him giving the goals, showing what he's capable of doing, do using his strength, the headers, even the goal. And he did do that today with the breast that he scored. Now he has three goals. Who, believe, who can even believe that? We didn't see that like happening and now it has happened. That's amazing. I love that. Uh, let me read it. And I also heard Mr. Gameplay has no knowledge. Of <laughs> now I know that I'm talking to the Almighty. Now I know that I'm talking to the Almighty when I hear that. Because he is the only one who comes after <laughs> Gameplay. He's the only guy who comes after Gameplay. If you give the guy some chance, you know, Gameplay, you have to enjoy the man. He's really good as well. I really enjoy because 
one thing I like about gameplay is that he has the confidence to come in life and say whatever he want to say. And I always love that. I always love that. Right now, I was actually wondering where he is as well because he's supposed to be talking about transfer talks. Uh, anyway, that's always amazing. That's always amazing. Let me read the next comment. Never mind. Never mind that um, England is good, but can they do it against the, the experienced Italians? See, Kellyn and Bonucci are carrying that team. You know, yeah, that, that's the thing, you know. That's the thing. You know why? I'm looking, I, I used to doubt England can do anything. Even though after they beat Czech Republic, after they beat Croatia, the team that stopped them from going anywhere in the World Cup, I used to doubt England a lot. But the interesting part is this. From Norway, they came in and they beat Germany. Now people are going to say Germany are not a good team and whatever. They were not really performing at their best. But I'm talking about a Germany that just beat Portugal by how many goals? They beat Portugal by four goals to two, if I'm not mistaken. And England just came from, from didn't even consider that, and just play and beat them by two goals to nil. Stopping a Germany team with that kind of players, those players who are scoring now, I'm talking about the likes of Kai Havard, those guys who have now be become amazing in terms of their performance, the fact that they were able to stop them from even playing that regular game, Germany, for me, I feel like I have to give them the respect. We'll see. We are playing Denmark next. And Denmark, we know that it's an experienced team that can cause trouble. But we'll see exactly what will happen. I can't wait to see that. I think England will beat Denmark because they have a better quality in their squad. I think that the Italians are just eagering I just getting edging it because they have more like a team. Okay, that's true. Italy have a team. I have no idea how the manager managed to do that. They have a team that understand each other. They move so well. They always help each other in each other's strength, and that is amazing. I don't know. I don't know, but I feel like. Somehow, some way, they're going to have a problem, in, especially that they lost Locatelli, the guy who picked up a injury. I felt like Locatelli was really important, especially working with this guy in the midfield. I don't know what's going to happen now for Italy next. That is the quest question that I have. What will Italy do? That's the question that I'm asking everyone. Let me hear your thoughts on the, on the comment section. On the other hand, England have a bigger squad and have the luxurious of bringing uh, Rashford and Birmingham on if they like. The Italians don't. As for example, Spinazzola is out. Yeah, that's the guy that I'm talking about. They lost to Spinazzola. And I felt like Spinazzola was really, really important in that midfield for Italy. You could see he has been one of the best, if not the best midfielders in the tournament, like as a whole, the whole tournament. Now that they have lost that kind of a player, that much of an influence, you know, Spinazzola was so good that Giorgino looked like a world-class player. That's how good he is. He made Giorgino look like a world-class player. Now that he is out for, I don't know, I think six or something months, which I feel sorry for him, but now they're going to be lacking that. And I feel like this will be the time where somehow, some way, England can take an, they can actually create or do something with that, with that chance. I don't know. It's going to be amazing to see, but I'm really excited to see what's going to happen here. But remember this. Oh, 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 this is gold. Gold does not even glitter. And not all those that are where are lost. The older that is strong, the, the old that is strong does not weather deep roots and are not rich to the forest. Okay. I see that is deep. That is deep, by the way. I hear what you're talking about. But uh, uh, one thing I can say, I don't know. I think every, every single one of us who have been doing this, uh, for uh, talking about England, we have been doing this every single time when they beat a, a team, we give them another team. They cannot do it against this one. They beat it again, we say they cannot do it against this one. They beat it again. Now the only team that everyone are throwing at them is Italy. 
and we will be surprised when the game is over but at the same time i want to remind you don't be surprised if these guys just bring the best out of them and actually shock the world because I feel like they are capable of doing that. They've been performing so well to even be at the level that they are at. And I don't know, I can't wait to see more from them. It's always amazing to see, but I'm, I'm excited. Anyway, talking about that, we are moving on to the last part point that I want to talk about. Oh, before the last point, Jordan Henderson scored for England, people. <laughs> Jordan Henderson scored for England. And I don't want to lie to you. I was really, really excited to see that goal goes in. If you want to check it out, there is a video that I left in the Football Connect. You can just go through it. You'll see my reaction to seeing Jordan Anderson score. It was amazing. I didn't expect it, and I love that. that he, and you could even see with his emotions that he was really happy that he scored that goal. And it's amazing. It gives him the confidence, you know, to continue because he has been struggling to get game time. And I hope that it is possible that he does get the game time that he deserves. Also, moving on to the next stage, Pickford. Jordan Pickford. One thing that I have to say about Pickford, he has definitely matured. He has really, really matured. He, has, he, he is no longer the same Pickford who was there in the World Cup tournament. And I have to put some respect on Southgate to, to give a player like Pickford that much trust to do what he was doing. I know today he had some scary moments, some mistakes, but he is he is really stepping up when he's needed. He's really doing the important saves. And for me, as a guy who has always loved to throw craziness or crazy comments about Pickford, I'm going to step it up and actually say I'm really, really proud and uh, at the same time really surprised by his performance. And I hope that he does perform the same way as well but anyway you may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lie you may trade me oh my god you're speaking to still i uh still i rise by maya angelo that is a poem that i did read in fact i used to be a literature student we did this poem still i rise by maya angels it's an amazing poem she was a good writer i see that she that's what you're doing there it's amazing anyway it's amazing Oh, so yeah, a poet, yeah? I see. <laughs> I love that as well. Anyway, moving on, we are going to be looking at... Whew, before we go to the next one, big up. I'm out, Sam. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thanks, thanks. Please do me a favor. Click the like button and subscribe to the connect. Always important. That means a lot to me. Anyway, thank you, thank you for being with me here, you know. Now we continue looking at the next games that come the next game oh before we even go there i think it's time for me to show you the stats of the game that was played today looking at how the england played against ukraine they had six ten shots uh, ten shots the whole game england there's a seven that ukraine tried two shots on target for ukraine six shots for england on target and from those six they did score four so that is really, really good. That's really, really good. It tells you that they are really working, work, really working so hard and they're proving to the world that they have something to offer. On top of that, corners, two corners and two offsides and four fouls, no yellow card or even red card, which is really important because a lot of teams have lost big players because of red cards and yellow cards which are making them miss the next tournaments and the next games. So the fact that England played the whole game without even picking up a yellow card, that tells you a lot about the mentality of the team, which makes it even easier for Southgate to even have something to look forward to. So I'm proud of that, for that. I'm really, really proud. It means that they are really focused and they really want to achieve something. So let's wait and see on that one. Secondly, moving on, uh, we have to also talk about the performance we saw from Ukraine. Even though they didn't perform so well, look at them. They had two shots, corners, fouls, a lot. You know, you could see that this was not their game at all. England pressed them a lot that they didn't give them the chance. And they had nothing to respond. And that tells you a lot about the mentality of the team what they are there to achieve and what they've set their 
mind on upon like what they really want to achieve at the end of this tournament and it's really amazing i'm really impressed by them you know i'm really impressed by them but anyway we'll definitely see how they go as we look at the other game that was played today yeah it was not only the last the only game that was played the one that i was not able to cover czech republic battle with denmark today and what a performance oh i missed that thing you know chef try to do something what a performance that we saw by the Dan danish because they managed to keep writing the story that they've started writing they're continuing with the story they have something to prove they want to they play each and every game to do it. They always say that they're doing it for Christian Eriksen, which they did today. They performed so well. They had the strategy. They got the two goals. And second half, even though they were, they were scored, they still they performed so well. And that was amazing to see. There's this thing that is just passing by me and it's really irritating me. So I just said to get it out of my way. Anyway, that was amazing performance, by the way. So for, for starters, Denmark's story continues, and it feels like they are not stopping at all. They have something to prove to the world. The two goals were amazing. They still have something that they want to prove to the world that they can produce. They still want to prove that to the world that even though they came in, nobody was even expecting them to be at the level that they are. They are still going to represent the team and the country at that level to show them that that they really do deserve to be where they are and for that for me it has been amazing to watch i'm really really impressed by their performance secondly uh czech republic also pulled out an amazing performance and the interesting part about this game is that it was so open that you can tell that czech republic should have gotten that in the end at least try to brought brought the team into a draw and actually try to get something they were kept they had the capability to do that they had everything that they had in them to actually get this game into draws or even to win the game but they could not do that and also that brings me to this point i noticed today that it was easy for czech republic to cause problem to the back line or even to get through the Danish team and the Schmeichel had to pull out some crazy, crazy saves. And looking at that, it just tells me that I, I'm really worried that when they face England, they are going to have a problem, especially dealing with the threat that Sterling has been able to produce the one that we always see. And it's going to be interesting to see what Kane and Sterling are going to be doing in this game, looking at other even players who are there, the likes of Mason Mount, the likes of uh, Jordan Sancho, with what they do, the movement is so close movement, and they know that the, some of the players in the back, the likes of Christiansen, they're dealing with the players that they're used to in the Premier League, so they definitely know how to deal with them. And also, I don't know if there are any yellow cards or red cards that were picked up in this game. Not, no, there were no red cards. I mean, yellow cards which are going to cause some players to be not so that they are not available in the next fixtures. This will cover it when we are talking about this building up to the semi-final, which I'm not going to do today. I'm going to do exactly in two days, I think in tomorrow or Monday. Monday, yeah, I think I'm going to do it on Monday, the build up to this one. So it's going to be Euro talk build up to the what? Semi-finals where I'm going to talk about this more in, in depth, try to cover everything that is happening and how other players are going to be capable of to represent the squads if they are not banned and stuff like that because also those things are going to play a part in determining who's going to the next level even for spain and uh, spain and italy or england and denmark it's really exciting some teams that we didn't ex expect to see them there they're still there who expected denmark to be still here they're still here it's it's a, it's a shocker the guys lost their first game to finland finland nobody was even rating them to even go anyway but they lost their game to Finland. That tells you the mindset and the mentality of the team. England can win, England win this trophy. So at the end of this, I'm gonna talk about this point later on after I show you the stats and what Denmark was able to prove against the against the Czech and how the game went. So for starters, 16 shots by the Czech to 11 for Denmark, which tells you which team had the upper hand, which team was also coming close to actually get the shot. But the interesting part is this, out of those 16 shots, only five were on target for Czech 
and the seven were on target for Denmark. So it tells you the little, how little or Denmark way in terms of trying to cause problems to the goalkeeper. Some of the check shots maybe were deflected and stuff like that, but it tells you the mentality of the teams. Nine corners for the check to seven of Denmark, three of sides to nothing, nine fouls to 10, and the two yellow cards to check. So also amazing that these guys go went out of this game without even considering a yellow card or even a red card, which means that that could save them a lot in terms of some players that they're going to deal with. So that is not really a problem for Denmark, but we will definitely see how that takes them to the next level. Next level. So this way exactly it guys this is how the games went on like and this is what we saw today i want to hear your thoughts in the comment section what did you think and who really did impress you and now before i disappear from here i just want to talk about this thing can england really win this trophy like i told you i'm going to remind you this again i told you that this is a tournament of the underdogs we have seen that now countless countless times that this year has been a year of underdogs and i'm gonna repeat myself again because maybe i'm gonna have to quote some of this when now we reach the final or when we see the guy who the team that wins the final we saw atletico madrid beat real madrid and barcelona to the trophy we saw ac milan beating juventus to the trophy Oh, I mean Inter Milan. We saw Lily beating PSG to the trophy. We saw a lot of things. And for me, it just tells you the difference in terms of me, the difference between the mentality of both these teams that, that are going to the next stage. But also it tells me that this is a season of the underdogs and they keep proving it each and every single day that they are the underdogs but they are providing some of the best performance and i don't think there is any big, bigger team to to be an underdog at this moment than england why because of all the teams that are in this tournament england and denmark are the ones that have not really won a thing so imagine if they take it from spain and italy either england or denmark that'll be crazy but let me know your thoughts in the comment section guys this has been amazing thank you thank you very much for being with me let me know if you have any questions always put them in the comment section i'll be back again tomorrow talking about transfers after church because tomorrow is sunday i need to go get, i need to go get pray for a bit people I need to go get pray for a bit and we will be building up to the semi-final of the euro 2020 this has been amazing I'm really building up a small, small history that I'm going to do some things that I'm going to be taking, some small shots that I'll be taking here just to prove to you how excited I've been with this tournament that we've watched today. But anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching and thank you for spending time with me. Click the like button. I repeat, subscribe to the Football Connect and the we will meet again on the other fixtures but for the football connect or from the football connect to you to the world thank you very much for being with me sam is signing out and i'm saying as i'll be counting one two three goodbye see you later it's the goalkeeper that just lost for words he is just brilliant georgia finish diego maradona johan cruyff